have you for set. Who gets a soul, Mio? Bless him, oh, Mio. He got a good dog. 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 My name is Dekme Obasoge. I'm here to present the life of one of the prominent personalities in Africa, a maestro, Professor Saab Vitor Waifu. I had the opportunity to interview him last year in Nigeria. Just take a look. How many years have you been in this music industry? Well, professionally, 60. Well, let us run down his profile. Mm. Professor Victor Waifu was born on the 1st of March, 1941, in the neighborhood of Benin. He belongs to a clan in Benin that is called a Mezi family. A Mezi family in Benin, term, will say, Egbenokma Wagyoba. So that is the family. Every, you know, it has been established that Benins have over 52 code salutations. When a child wakes up in Benin, he does not say, good morning, good morning. So such a child could be conceived as rude. When a child wakes up, la and that's where Professor Victor Waifu actually belongs. Professor Victor Waifu, at such an early age, uh, at six, he was already dancing to what they call the Spanish tunes on the gramophone. Spanish tunes on records. They were labeled GV1, GV2, GV3, so on and so forth. GV means gramophone vibes. Those days, they, there was this particular gramophone uh, owned originally by their father, Pat W. O. Waifu. This is the gramophone. The gramophone uh, was the only music box that was available at the time Professor Victor Waifu and his other siblings were born. This particular one was originally owned by Professor. Sir Victor Waifo's father, Pat W. Waifo. Yeah. Pat W. Waifo used to play what they call the Spanish tunes on records, on this gramophone. Uh, Sir Victor Waifo, when he was just six years of age, he used to dance so well to the Spanish tunes. As a matter of fact, what they used to do was to wind the handle having wound it, they will put the, it will begin to roll and they'll put this particular pin and you hear music playing and everyone, those who wanted to dance, will just dance. Perhaps in the next five minutes, it will have stopped and your printer will go back there and say, just hold on, he'll go back there and wind again and the music will start again and everybody will, will start dancing again. <laughs> so that was it. This particular gramophone sort of, later in life, inspired Professor Victor Waifu when eventually he grew up to become, to understand his environment and to become a super duper star. He came up with a music genre that he uh, labeled a casa. Subsequently, he labeled a casa as a casa one, a casa two, a casa three, a casa four, to mention but few. It was obviously a carryover from what he used to hear from this particular gramophone. As a child, he was already building different structures. He will, he will build cars, mm. he will construct cars, he will construct uh, kites. Mm. Uh, one, one of the kites that he constructed one day flew and joined the cloud. <laughs> and they didn't see it again. So he had been so adept in so many ways, whether musically mm. or otherwise. That's one man who could have been an engineer if destiny had taken him to that direction. He could as well have been a lawyer. Most of the, in fact, his siblings, they were lawyers. In fact, we still have uh, 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 one of his other brothers uh, was a uh, uh, Supreme Court judge, Justice of the Supreme Court. We're talking about uh, Right Honorable Justice S.O. Waifu, uh, the brother to Professor Sir Victor Waifu of the Supreme Court, now retired. Uh, before now, he was the Chancellor for the Anglican Communion. I'm talking about uh, Right Honorable Justice S.O. Waifu, the other brother. And all these people, uh, where they were also musically inclined. Along so the, 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 the scope of music is something that actually 
grew up in that family. It was something they inherited from their, the, from, from their parents. The mother used to be Yagbe in Baptist those days, and she used to be the chorus leader. Even their father was a lover of music. Imagine somebody who bought a gramophone then. And gramophone was the only in thing those days. No electricity. So the only music box that was available was a gramophone. And the father had it. He was playing cheap records on and on. And he, Professor Victor Alfred caught up with that trend. He kept on playing music. He was also into his academics. It, well, music has been part of my life. Art has been part of my life. Inventions have been, been part of my life. And sports has been part of my life. Anything worth doing also has been part of my life. As a matter of fact, I was born into a family of very prominent and uh, music-oriented people. They, they belong to different disciplines, but there's one common um, uh, creativity, mm -hmm. a talent, and that is the music in us. But I took it to mm -hmm. the next level, and uh, that's where we are. I, the gramophone record there, the gramophone, I, I, I was born in an era of gramophone music. Mm -hmm. you know, gramophone, you wind it and then uh, you let it go and start playing. No electricity, nothing. No batteries? No batteries, no, 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 no. It just, uh, I'll just do a little bit of it for you. See, this is gramophone. This is gramophone. This gramophone, you wind it like this, then you release it. Evaluation gave me a blow When the ponga fell down so low The cost of living gone up so high I love the goods but I cannot buy No, you don't charge anything. No, just like you know, like in those rich work, you just wind it. Mm, that's all. Uh -huh. No bad no nothing. nothing. So <coughs> that was the era. And what? this one is still working. Uh -huh. After years you, and years. Yes. But it's not in the market anymore, though. No, no, no. You can find it abroad. Oh my God. But it's uh, expensive because like, all these are special uh, products. How many the, years have you been in this music industry? Well, professionally, 60. No, no, it's more than that. Professionally, well, 60. But I'm going to 78. I'm a lot uh, of. I've I seen. Don't look 70. Uh, yes. So that's it. I grew up cold in Benin, Western Boss High School, and St. Gregory's College, Lagos, and Yaba College of Technology. I was already a graduate before I went into music you know, professionally. Mm -hmm. First graduate also in Nigeria to play music professionally from Yaba College of Technology. And later years, when I had, at the peak of my career, I went back to school and enrolled at the University of Benin to read sculpture. And I, and I made first class honors, and I was the best student. And so I became a valedictorian, and I read the valedictorian speech on behalf of the REC students. And I did my master's degree there, and then a PhD. You know, so you can see that in music I'm already an institution. In sculpture, mm -hmm. I am a, I'm, I'm a researcher, so, and I have, okay. I have, I have a set a record that is yet to be um, equal or to be, you know, it will take a long time because I'm not just apart from music. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I'm a sculptor. I'm a philosopher, I'm an architect. I designed this house, I built it. You I, did it yourself? Yes, I, I designed the aeroplane the house, I built it. I designed the museum, I built it. And I invent musical instruments, the revolving magic guitar that spins round. You see them in the video. And then the uh, sixth finger, what I call sixth finger, you, you, to play extra musical notes. Put this on my finger like this. and. Uh, I used it to play extra um, 
and not on the guitar. You are the first person that started doing that. Of right? course, now. Yeah, this one was just uh, last year. I keep doing things, new, new things. I develop new ideas and I put them into practice. And you are so, the first person uh, to create a, a guitar that has a two. Two uh, hairs there with 18 strings. Yes. So I what did happened that. after you did that? I, I, I made use of it in the, in the 60s and uh, I was done with it. And I, I always look for something new. Did you Great. introduce it to another country? Well, it was already on the net, you know. You know but, uh, so I should take the patent right. So most of these things, mm -hmm. the um, Nigerian government should have taken them up and uh, reproduced and make them big business. But if it's not oil, nobody's interested here. Yeah. So I, that one, I put that one aside. Yeah. And if you look at it, he invented a double neck guitar. Okay. There was no such guitar on earth. In, on invention in 1967, he took it to London for an electrifying performance, electrifying performance. Mm. The white man saw it and started replicating it, because at that time he had in the patent right. But as a way of making a follow-up, in <coughs> 1985, mm. he came up with this one that he calls a magical wonder guitar. You can see, uh, you can see an integration of um, the keyboard and the guitar. He, he invented it here in Nigeria. the one and only on X. He did it not here Nigeria. in Nigeria. He did it here in Benin City. <laughs> he did it here right in Benin City, but it's the only, the first and only kind of guitar that goes like this. There's no other sort of guitar. This one also has a revolving facility that enables him to spin it around 360 degrees. So this is the first of its kind. He's at the verge of getting the patent right of this particular one. The cost, some of the costumes he used on stage. And if you wish to know this, this was the very first acoustic guitar that he played when he was only just 12 years of age. English acoustic guitar. He created it? Or uh, bus band? He bought it, the first bought, uh, English bus guitar he bought. Okay. So, you are the first uh, uh, winner of a gold disc in, in Africa, Africa as a whole? As a whole. Okay. That's the song Jeremy. And it became a, an anthem even in Ghana. So, there was even a dress named after a Jeremy, Jeremy dress in Ghana. When did you compose this song, Jeremy? It was released in 1965. Oh, that was a long time ago. So you didn't... I was in Emuleka. Emuleka, yes. She was not born at all. Jeremy, in Bini mythology, was a wrestler. The world champion. He conquered the world. And he thought he should go to hell where the devil had seven heads. And he thought they were better off with one head each. So he climbed a palm tree, a mysterious palm tree, which Saint Oman was warned by his father not to climb. So when he climbed the palm tree, he saw his seven heads, his seven headed devils. So the sister turned into a fly, followed him. In the wrestling arena, he threw the seven headed devil, plucked off one head, and that was when he started sang a chorus. Kese, Kese, Joromio, Omi, Krikisi. Is a plot of their heads, one after the other, and left them with one head each. And that's the story of Jeremy. <laughs> It's not a gallery, it's a museum. Museum, okay. I went through the museum, I saw many artworks there. Those are my works, I made them. I you made them. all? All of them. As I'm a sculptor. All right, this is where we call the Revolution Tourist Palazzo. The president and founder is none other than the foremost entertainer, Professor Sir Victor Waifu, M-O-N-J-P. As a matter of fact, this is where the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful of Benin Kingdom, in particular, Edo people, Nigerian people, African people in particular, and the rest of the world in general are being showcased. The Revolution Tourist Palazzo, the tourist center, is informative, educative, inspirational, and entertaining. We're about to see what made this place think as the largest independent tourist center in Africa. Professor Victor Waifo, more than any a, a dumb man, whether dead or alive, has taken the Nigerian music or a dumb music or the Benin music to the global podium. He is one 
protagonist and paradigm that the world looks up to. He has advocated for arts, he's an advocate for tourism, mm -hmm. an advocate for culture. for culture. He believes in the culture of our people. He believes and he says like James Agri of Ghana, I'm proud of my color. Mm. He who is not proud of his color is not fit to live. He's a true Nigerian. Mm. He breaks Ni Nigeria, he talks Nigeria, he advocates Nigeria, he preaches Nigeria, he seminizes it. And that is what Professor Victor Eiffel has done all over the years that makes him indeed promised. Every work you find here... Do you think he's a cultural custodian? Oh yeah, he's a custodian of Benin culture. In fact, uh, apart from the Oba of Benin, the Omono Banedo, Guacolo Polo, Oba Tope, there is no other Benin man who has the culture of Benin woven around him than Professor Sir Victor White. Uh, in 1965, when Jeremy was released, the song, the song, the song Jeremy. Jeremy was released mm. in 1965. Mm. In fact, three days of his release, it has sold well over 100,000 copies. Mm. It was a single. And then subsequently, in the next six months, it has sold in millions. The copies were all over the world. And then they, uh, they, they, there were people who were so curious all over the world, they would ask with a glint in their eyes. What is this new song that you sing? And what is this new dance that you dance? The people always got the same answer. They originate, they, they dance. The song is Jeremy. The entrancing dance step is a quitty. And the originator is Sir Victor Waifo. Even till yesterday, you see some of my works. If you go to Bower Campus now, you will see at the T-junction before the Akid the Hall, you will see one of my works there, 20 feet high, with ivory tusks. It's in the royal altarpiece. So you here he said, honor, Honorable Ambassador, culture, what, culture, culture and tourism. tourism. So I was the um, mm -hmm. ambassador plenipotentiary of River State when Donald Duke was the governor there. Oh. They made me the ambassador plenipotentiary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Oh my God. Okay, currently, what are you doing? I'm a researcher, and I'm still playing. I play engagements of people, you know, who can afford to hire my services. Come and they, you know, I two months ago, you know, last month or so, yeah, I had a show in Benin, yeah. and uh, I've been having shows all over the country, in Puja and the rest, you know, this year. Yeah. I'm still performing, and I'm still researching. I'm in academics. I was a lecturer, you know, between. 2006 and 2014 at the University of Benin. And you yeah. have how many degrees? Tell us. I uh, two, two, two different two degrees, two degrees. PhD. In fact, yes, I have. If you talk of degrees, I have, I have. Be honors, first class. When you say somebody has a first class honors, it's okay that this, uh, you know what it, people understand what it, it is. Then I have master's degree. Then I have a PhD. So I'm an institution. Um, no, it's not gain saying, you know. And um, I'm a researcher. I'm still researching. Okay, tell us more about your work uh, with regards to Obini culture. You have seen all, and there's no need to talk about it again. You go to uh, about Kenzwa cultural complex. Mm. You will see those works there. I made them about Kenzwa there and the other chief. My works are all over the country, so you will read from. That book, uh, the Revelation the, Palazzo, you will see the, most of them. You the, make up your composition okay, from there. Uh, the, yes. Okay. So, and um, I saw that uh, you you focus more on the historical context of Benin culture. Yes, because you don't know Benin if you have not been to Revelation Palazzo Museum, because before you know it, you no know, people forget easily. If you do not document history, mm. you lose the uh, uh, history. Uh, people make history, but they don't document history. And that's why I'm doing all this one. You know, the, in the writing and uh, in documentation, physically. And uh, you can, so that people can learn from it. You have to, uh, 
uh, learn from the take from the past to advance the future. So we we must uh, be able to understand history from the roots. Uh, our heritage is very rich, very rich. Our culture is rich, and so we need to um, preserve the history through documentations and um, through the museum, the artworks and writings, and so on and so forth. Okay. And so while I'm alive, I continue to do my best to preserve our okay. uh, heritage. Do you see yourself as the custodian of Benin culture? <laughs> well, the Oba is the first custodian of Benin culture, but I have accelerated it, I have added value to it in my own way all along. Everybody is uh, is a custodian of culture. You are, as you are talking now, you are also okay. already adding value to our culture. Yeah, according to what you said before, you said uh, something, music is something in, in your lineage, your family, your parents. Were they uh, musicians? No, 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 they were not musicians. If my father had a gramophone, which means he was a lover of music before I was born, that one I just played. But Everybody in the family can play an instrument or the other one of instrument the other. I have brothers, you know, uh, engineers, mm -hmm. lawyers. Um, uh, uh, one is still alive. Who is still there? Uh, who, who, who recently was who served as a, a judge of the Supreme Court? Mm -hmm. You know, as of 1963, he was already a graduate at the Yaba College of Technology in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Then, in 1991, he came back to re-enroll to pick up to dust his, his papers and began his academic career again. And he became, the, in fact, he bought his, his, uh, his uh, BA in fine supply arts department. He, was, he got a first class. That's what he said. He made a first class. Yeah, he's always on top. And he was the one on behalf of graduating students that year who read the validatory speech. He was a student who did that. And he did not stop there. He went for his master's. He didn't stop there. He went for his doctorate. And I speak with you, Sir Victor, Professor Sir Victor Waifu. He's at the verge of getting or backing his second doctorate degree. At his age? Oh, yes, at his age. His works are, I mean, speak volume. One of his, for, in his first degree, his special project is at uh, Ekewa campus. Right now, his doctorate degree project right now if you get, go down to Bowo campus, mm. it is majestically positioned there, over 20 feet. Mm. So, one other question about him. Uh, he encountered Mami Water. The Mami, yes, he did. At the Babich in Lagos, that was in 1967. Really? Yes, he did, he did. It was one-on-one, -on -one. although sometimes he calls it a esoteric ex uh, experience. But it was visible to only him. But he saw the Mami. Are you getting? He, call, he disguised it as esoteric, but I'm talking about one on one, just yeah, the way I'm interacting with you. Uh -huh. That was what happened. He was accustomed to going to the barbage mm. to relax. Mm. You know, when he finished from the Yaba College of Technology, he gained an appoint, appointment as, as, as assistant graphic head at Nigerian Television Service, now MTA, mm. in Lagos, you know, Victoria Island. Mm. That's where. So the, the, the TV station. And the garbage is just a stone thrown. So he was always, he had the privilege of always going there. Sometimes he would go there with the, with the boys to strum the guitar. But on this particular occasion, he was all alone. He went and st he strummed through the night. At about 1.30 a.m., he welcomed the chance to go back to freshen up for the day's activities. As he went, picked up his camp bed and his guitar. And when he turned, he suddenly saw a strange figure on the, on, the, on the sea. In fact, in the midst of this torrential effects, you know, at the barbit you have mm. a wall of water coming from right, another wall of water coming from the left, mm. is coming to slap each other at the middle. Mm. That was when the mama suddenly appeared. In fact, he was stunned. In description, she was so beautiful. The mama was silvery. And in fact, the only way to describe the beauty of the mama is to, be, is to begin to talk about the impressionistic art of a former painter, poet, architect, scientist called Leonardo da Vinci, who actually painted the most beautiful woman that he called Mona Lisa. In further description, Professor Victor Waifu observed with, 
with dismay that from the head down to the waist she was human. But from the waist down she was fish. He was momentarily lost in the wilderness of words. He could neither run nor shout. But eventually, when he came back from the recess of his mind, as he went for his combat and his guitar, he was going to take to his heels, just like lightning. The mammoth just swam towards him, looked at him intently in the eyes, and then said, Victor Waifo, guitar boy, if you see mammy water, never, never you run away. The, the mammoth spoke uh, Oh, English. yeah, yes, English. Victor Waifo. So he replied him in English. You know, Victor Eiffel, he, he, you, know, you know, he was stunned. He said, hmm? That was what he replicated with the pulling of that string. Guitar boy, hmm? It was a way of replicating no, the, that encounter. The man yes. was speaking English. Oh, yes. Spoke English. Clear tone English. Articulate English. That was what he, she spoke. Looked at him and said, Victor Eiffel. If you see Mammy Water, never, never you run away. As soon as that tidy was passed across, she, she just turned, swam away. And Professor Victor Waifo, <laughs> regaining <laughs> consciousness again, took, quickly picked his guitar and his combat took to his ears. He never went back to the barbecue anymore. <laughs> Until later in life when he came back to settle down in Benin. So that was the encounter that he had with the mermaid. It was not based on fiction. It was based on fact. It was actually what happened in 1967 but, at the barbecue in Lagos. But the mermaid uh, was uh, visible to only visible, him. Visible, visible. To only well, him. I wouldn't say only him because he was the only one that was present at that time at okay. about 1.30 a.m. Okay, okay. So uh, probably if uh, there were other people there, they would have seen the mermaid as well. Mm, I think it's something that appeared to only him. Yeah, well, it could be. well, it is... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that, that one, apart from being a performing artist mm. or a maestro, mm. a global maestro who has conquered the whole world in the field of entertainment, he's also a visual artist. Mm. He has produced a lot of works. In his special project, he was the one who produced a bicycle, riding on his horse and accompanied by a live leopard. He was the one who actually reminisced into that history, unfolded the book. Open the book wide open to all of us to remember that once upon a time, 1550 AD, there was an Oba called Oba Esigi, mm. the son of Idiani Yesigi. So he created a portrait of the palace inside the museum. Yes. Also, this uh, Overham Square. Oh, yes. The Overham Square is there. We have open air court where you have a uh, bust of some important personalities, mm -hmm. especially the Obas. Mm -hmm. We about, about Vurame, we, we have about, about Vurame Square. That one tells the entire story about uh, about what happened in 1897. That is Benin Massacre, or some people call it Benin Expedition. Mm -hmm. We also have that. Mm -hmm. There you are going to see Asoro mm -hmm. in his regalia. The, some of the works that he did. You'll find Chief also, yeah. whose hands were tied behind. You're going to find Obaye, Olobose, who actually confronted Captain Phillips. It was, it was he, Olobose, who actually shot Cap Captain Phillips, killed him, and five others. Only two of them escaped. Those who escaped down to, they got to Sapele, and from then they sent a radio message describing the situation as very, very serious. So Professor Victor Waifo has been able to, to, to place tabs on all these events, mm. a, a way of reminding the generations that are not born yet to know where they're coming from. Uh, who's going to take over his work? Oh, well, um, he's the one who has always said, you know, he's also a philosopher. Hmm. He says a genius has no duplicate. Oh. His success is so very, very unlikely. So be like him. He also said that no man is indispensable. The best brains could be found in the grave. Nobody is indispensable. So what it simply means is that, in as much as we see him from that angle of being a virtuoso, a legend of legends, mm -hmm. it's an epitome of entertainment. It's Wherever, of entertainment. when Victor Weibo climbs the stage, you know this man has unequal personality. He could take his audience by storm at any given moment.
He will hold his audience spellbound and he'll begin to ask for more. With his staccato and legato genius. beats. He's a genius. <laughs> He's a genius of no mere refute. <laughs> Nobody like him. No, no, no. Hey, when, in fact, God going, Almighty has endowed us my so well. Yeah, when, when you arrive in this street, <laughs> immediately you arrive in this street, you will see the artwork. Because he's a paradigm. He's, he's a model, a role model to the call. He's exceptional in everything. Oh, yes, when it comes yes. to music, when it comes to invention, when it comes to artwork, he's always exceptional. Oh. He, he actually builds uh, a house in form of an aircraft. Look at an aircraft here. Yes. So if you, whenever you, wherever you want to travel to, wherever you want to go, you just come to Revelation Taurus Palazzo flight. He designed it. He designed it, yeah. Hmm. And each side, it, it looks exactly like an airplane. Yes, it's an airplane. Crazy house. Yes, and you have the pilot always ready to welcome all of us. They, they host, the has, host there. It has two wheels. And the hostesses. It there, has there. two wheels. Oh yeah, you have the wheels there. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. So this is the airplane, inside the airplane. Oh yes, yes. And then you have an enclosure, like a real airplane. It is a concept of Professor Victor Weifel. Yeah, he's very creative. Oh yes, yeah. hey man, I will. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's born so, to be. He's destined. very creative. Oh That's his, des his destiny. <laughs> uh, he says a genius comes but once. He's a, a genius. genius. He says a genius has no successor. It comes only mm -hmm. once. His successor, very, very unlikely. So he's a genius. And he started Geniuses early. are very few and far between. Mm -hmm. And he started when he was very young. Oh yes, at the age of six, he was already dancing to Spanish tunes on records. He would dance. He danced so graciously that uh, he would spread some pennies to his He grew up in a family of music, and uh, he's been into music. But one remarkable thing about him is the fact that he tried proving his father wrong, even right in his grave. He proved him wrong by going to school. Because those days, you know, his father was an elite. His father was a disciplinarian to the core and very strict. His father never wanted them to have anything to do with music. Because those days, music was associated with womanizing, tobacco smoking, and then on short lives and, you know, criminality to mention but few. But this man picked up the guitar and began to play it. And the father won't seize this guitar. Uh, there was such little uh, um, uh, retrieve, uh, you know, passionate retrieve, humbly, passionately, and lovingly retrieved by the mother. Hmm. Not just only a musician, he's also an artist. You know what we call him? We call him. We call him virtuoso of the art. Yes. A virtuoso is someone who has uh, ability in every facet of art. He is a master. In fact, the best you can ever come find in the in, in amongst the black race in the african continent uh, as a matter of fact he came in a unique way Very unique. came he yes. saw he conquered like julius yes. caesar did yes. bestriding the whole world like a mantle colossus uh, as a matter of fact professor uh, sir victor waifo is a blend between the academia and the world the visual arts and the performing. Oh, you are coming. Oh, you are coming. Oh, you 